And uh, not all good news. We're coming off the death of Terry Funk. And unfortunately, the top story today, Dave, is the death of Bray Wyatt. Man. We you found know, out literally a half hour after we finished recording last night. And I was asleep already. Yeah. Horrible, though. Um, I feel so bad for the kids. And um, so I guess um, when, when, when Bray first left WWE uh, a couple years back, it would have been um, after the... When, when, remember, when we got released, when he got released and everyone was going like, why did he get released? And um, that's when I found out he had a heart issue, but it was, you know, pretty much off the record at the time, but there were people who knew. And um, so when he, you know, I, I didn't hear it was serious. I mean, it's, it was serious enough that he wasn't wrestling, but I didn't know how the severity of it. Um, but I was a little surprised maybe when he came back, but maybe not because he was talking about doing indies. You know, he was going to do the Wyndham name. Um, as an indie wrestler, but he never did any indies. And then he came back, um, you know, with the big teases and everything like that to WWE. And then um, when he was in WWE, he was going to wrestle Lashley at WrestleMania this year. And um, or was it last year? It was was it this year, right? It, it was this year, yeah. It was last this year. Minute. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And then it got pulled in. It got pulled right at the end. And that's when he got COVID. And... Um, you know, we had been under the, I knew that it was a serious, a very serious case of COVID because obviously in most cases with COVID, you're back pretty quick. Um, and he, you know, and, and there was teases and stuff like, and you know, people were saying like they didn't know when he would be back, but then, you know, he wasn't back for a long, long time. So you knew it was pretty serious. I did not know that the COVID uh, made his heart worse. I, you know, Sean Ross Sapp reported that, um, but I knew that COVID had made him very, very sick. And um, at that point, um, you know, the last we had heard was from his father, Mike Rotunda, that, um, you know, he was doing better. And there were a lot of teases of return. Um, and then, you know, he had a heart attack. 36 years old. It's a really, really sad story. I mean, I don't know what, what to say. He was a creative genius. You know, one of the things like when we talked about Terry last night is... Um, or yesterday afternoon, U.S. time, is when you're a creative genius, you you have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ideas. They're they're not always going to work. You know, like Terry's had many, many ideas that didn't work, and many that did. And Bray, you know, when it came to this character, um, it was a, it was a huge, huge merchandising success. You know, it had its flaws. I mean, the music was perfect. He picked it out. He was very, very hands on on the on the creative end. Um, you know, I know the promos were very, um, inspired by Bugsy McGraw, um, you know, who, um, you know, the cadence and, and kind of the, the whole rhythm of the promos and everything like that, who was a big star in the late seventies, early eighties. And, um, but he, you know, he developed his own character and he was a huge, huge merchandise seller and, um, you know, um, just just another tragedy it's um i don't really know what else to say you know i mean you know we saw his whole career in just a few years we you know from um he was moon what moonshine mulligan um and some other names when he was uh, he was he was actually did um he was a pretty good college football player i think he was like a, a, a jc star in california uh, i think southern california and then um, um then he went to troy university in alabama i believe it was and, um, you know, he's a starting, you know, starting offensive lineman, I believe, but he was a starting lineman. And then after football, you know, he came to him and his brother were both signed by WWE and he had the background, you know, his father was a very good amateur wrestler at Syracuse, um, you know, went to the NCAA tournament, didn't place in it, but went and, um, placed in some, you know, some major tournaments and Bray was a state champion heavyweight in Florida. And, um, you know, his, his, uh, you know, his son Taylor, you know, or his brother Taylor, um, you know, was, uh, um, you know, I was obviously Bo Dallas was, uh, was placed in the state, but didn't win it. And, um, he, you know, WWE took him in and he got a rep really quick of being a really good promo guy. And then the first that a lot of people would have seen him because in those days, the Florida championship wrestling stuff was only on television in the Tampa Orlando area to sell the local house shows before they pulled it from TV, you know, it was before it was on USA and or anything like that. And I mean, not USA, well USA and also before it was even on um, WWE network. And 
he um and then it ended up on WWE network and then um you know i just remember he went through a bunch of different gimmicks uh down there and then he was husky harris on the nxt television show and first came up as husky harris and then you know that didn't really pan out well and uh then he came back as bray wyatt you know with the lantern and everything and all that stuff really clicked you know the wyatt family with uh you know Jonathan Huber, you know um, Luke Harper, another another tragic story, and of course Braun Strowman, and uh, you know I mean, um, and I, you know people were asking like the best Bray Wyatt match. I think it was the to me the one that and I you know I haven't been studying this one. You know I mean it is all largely off the top of my head, but the one that I seem to remember as the best Bray Wyatt match would be um, the Shield and the Wyatt family. Um, had a six-man tag that was just awesome, awesome. Um, I think his best singles match, maybe Brian Danielson? Yeah, it was Brian Danielson, and then I think he had a... There was like a SmackDown match with Sheamus, I think it might have been. I forget who it was with, but it, it was just... They just pounded on each other. It was a great hard-hitting match. I remember watching that one at the time and thinking, that's one of the best Bray Wyatt matches I ever saw Yeah, as a singles match. He, he had a good match with Owens. I mean, it was tough because... You know, yeah, Kevin Owens, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, when he did the Fiend gimmick, which was a, you know, a huge, huge success, but it was really a tough gimmick because, you know, that, that supernatural thing, a lot of people, you know, I mean, it, it sold a lot of merchandise, and it was a very popular gimmick, you know, but it was hard in the ring to work with him because, you know, to make that gimmick work, he couldn't really sell much. It's the supernatural thing, and for people who, you know, a lot of people don't want supernatural in wrestling, but... Obviously, a lot of people were fine with it. And, you know, for the people who don't like, who want wrestling more realistic, you know, that was a very unrealistic character. Um, and, you know, he had to play Superman and everything like that. So it was tough for guys. You know, I mean, it, it you know, ruined Seth Rollins for a while. It ruined Miz for a while. They both had to go heel after it. Um, it was a tough one. It was a tough one to work with. And, um, you know, originally, he was given that undefeated streak and run through everybody. And the idea was to go with Roman Reigns at the, the uh, 2020 WrestleMania. And then, you know, they'd, they'd gone undefeated with him. And then Vince, um, you know, he, they booked him with Bill Goldberg. And Vince had the idea. And, and, and it wasn't just Vince. A lot of people had the idea. You know, it's like, you know what? You know, I know it's supposed to be Bray Wyatt, but Roman Reigns and, and Bill Goldberg is like a bigger match, even though they've been pushing Bray Wyatt as this unbeatable guy for a year, that even with that, Roman Reigns and Bill Goldberg's a bigger WrestleMania match. They made the tr the switch, and you know, Bill Goldberg beat Bray Wyatt before Roman Reigns, and then you know it ended up with uh, you know that Roman pulled out anyway, and so Bill was, was always supposed to be short term. Lost to uh, Braun Strowman, and um, you know that's when Bray had that match with John Cena, which is very polarizing match. I mean, because you know what it was, what was what it was. Um, and, uh, you know, then the fiend stuck around and, uh, you know, they kept going for a long time and, uh, for, you know, basically another year. And then that's when he pulled out and which I presume in hindsight, uh, was when they found out about the health issues the first time. It was really weird. A lot of the stuff with the fiend, because he would be getting this big push and then all of a sudden he wouldn't anymore. Like, we, we talked about the Goldberg one. You know, he's going undefeated, and then he just loses to Goldberg in Saudi Arabia. It, it, was, still, then, it, it, was, it was still a big push, but... It but, was, but they just ended it out of nowhere. And yeah, then they yeah. did the same thing, actually, if I recall this off the top of my head. But remember they did that... Uh, he was feuding with Randy Orton. And if I recall, like, in the build-up to WrestleMania, Randy, like, hit him with an RKO, and he didn't sell it. And he jumped up, and and you know they did the big angle, and then they went to WrestleMania, did like a and they were like match. the opener, and it was like five minutes. Randy hit the RKO, and he pinned him, and it was like nothing. And I was like, what happened there? Yeah, well, that's probably what happened. And then the other question I have is, you know, so he gets diagnosed, or he's got a heart issue, or whatever. Normally, with WWE, when there's a situation like that, it's like, okay, you can't wrestle. But, like, they hold you over till the end of your contract. They keep paying you. Your contract expires. You can't wrestle, and that's it or whatever. But they fired him. They released Why him. Why did they fire him when he had a I, I, I have no idea, you know, what, what, you know, what was going on there. Um, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. But I remember 
everyone was freaked out when he got released because it was like yeah because they, they if you were hurt they didn't release you yeah you know i mean well it, it one of the things was he had a giant salary okay i mean and i don't know if that played into it you know especially with the company making so huge profits but i remember when he was released and people didn't know about the health issue um that a lot of people were panicking going like if they could release bray they could release anyone at any time um but he was really highly paid i mean that was one of the things i mean um and I don't know if that p played into it or not. I presume it did, you know, as far as the answer to your question, but I don't know the answer, you know, and I, you know, so, but um, yeah, man, I think of the, you know, he had, he had, I think he had four kids, right? Four kids. Yeah. 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 And they, they announced that uh, all sales of his merchandise, all the proceeds are going to his, uh, his wife and his four kids. Yeah. So they did announce that. And uh, I presume, you know, they'll, they'll do some stuff on, on uh, SmackDown and Raw. Maybe they'll do something AW. Well, they're definitely doing something on SmackDown Sunday uh, tonight. They're definitely doing something on SmackDown tonight, um, and they've changed some segments on the show, probably having to do with that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's you know they ha and they pretty much have to, I think. And um, yeah, and they'll. Um, I don't know. This would SmackDown is the first show since uh, Terry died too. Mm -hmm. So you know, you would think that they would do a segment on. Terry, but man, like, you know, then you, then you have that thing of, is it too much of a downer? You know what I mean? On the same show. But I mean, this whole week has been a downer and, and, you know, you can't, you know, I know they try to put, you know, a happy spin on every single thing and sometimes you can. And I mean, I, I mean, they, they, I, I presume they have to do something on Bray Wyatt. They have to do something on Bray. There's no Terry doubt. Terry Funk. I mean, they, he, he wrestled there he a lot. Absolutely. They absolutely should. I mean, he's, but a, I, I he think was my a, point he, is if they, if they only do too. one, I think they're going to do Bray Wyatt. Oh, I would agree. I would agree yeah. because of the, because he's the proximity of it and everything like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, you know, he had been working there, you know, or, earlier this year and there was talk of him coming back, you know, in recent weeks really i felt like so um his father just uh, about uh you know three four weeks ago said that he expected him to be back soon yeah they all expected him back soon so um and then yeah just heart attack out of nowhere i guess um it wasn't you know like with terry it was a lingering thing and it was it was gonna happen i mean i don't know what terry had and you know because it was kept very secret but but the fact that Terry was in really rough shape. I mean, I guess that was relatively secret too, but, but I was aware of that. And I, you know, I more than aware. And, um, you know, I've been worried about Terry, you know, for a while, but with this one, I, from what I gather, this was just, he got a heart attack, you know, and nobody expected it. And 36 years old, it's just so, so tragic, you know, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. You know, he, um, you know, if, I mean, without the health issues, I mean, who knows where he would be? Um, I mean, because he was, you know, positioned as one of the biggest guys in the company. Yet at the same time, that gimmick that he... And, and I guess, you know, when he came back, he kind of evolved a little bit out of the gimmick because that gimmick was... That gimmick was a tough one to do long term. And he had whatever his new kind of gimmick was. But it was... He was kind of evolving back into The Fiend, wasn't he? Wasn't that kind of what it looked like? Well, yeah, The Fiend and then Uncle Howdy... Well, Uncle Howdy were, were clearly going to be doing something there. And well, they, that was going to be him and against his brother. Well, sure. And then they you, you could see they were teasing that Alexa was going to end up. She was going to end up back, back with them. Yes, yes. And, uh, and that but, that wouldn't, a, but that wouldn't happen because she ended up getting pregnant. Well, yeah. But I mean, they but that, were, but they that were was clearly the idea. heading back in that direction again. Yeah. And it was a, it was a hard gimmick because, I mean, her, her doing that gimmick also hurt the women in the women's division. Yeah, well, I mean, I just remember poor Shayna Baszler having to work with that gimmick. It was horrible. Um, you know, especially for, but yeah, yeah. And everyone having to, to, you know, she, she playing Superwoman, which is really hard yet at the same time, they didn't really want her to be above, you know, like, you know, you really don't want her to be above Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, you know what I mean? Cause they're like really bigger stars and all that. So that was a tough one, you know, and Shayna was the one that had kind of bite the bullet for that one. You know, I remember, I remember those segments. I thought they were terrible, but you know, I mean, again, but the doll was a big merchandise seller too. So the stuff worked at a at a level, you know. I mean it was a, it was a um you know, it was it was a marketing success. It was a very tough gimmick to work with from a creative long-term standpoint. But also I think that he was well aware of that, which is why he was when he came back, you know, he kind of evolved the gimmick and he was going in a direction but we don't know what the end direction was going to end up being. So, um, and I mean, it was 
the, uh, the the tease of his comeback was brilliant. You know, originally, I think they went to the well too often with it, as it showed. But the first, I mean, they did that monster SmackDown rating in quarter hour when they had teased, you know, um, that underground tease type of a thing of 923 at 923 or something. Yeah, it was it was 923, and then I forget who was in the ring, but it was someone that was tied been Stroman, to him. Stroman, I think. It was Stroman, actually. It was, it, was, Stroman. it was a Stroman match, and it did yeah. like a huge number. Huge number. At 9.15 p.m., Right, right. So, so it was a it was a great uh, viral campaign. Yeah, it was. It, it 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 taught us a lot about that type of marketing to work. Although it's really the only example of it, you know, the, that hit that big. Um, but then they did. They continued it. And if you remember, after that, the next time they did it, you know, where they promised his return, it was big, but it was nothing like the first time. So that it was kind of like that first one when they didn't deliver him, and they just you know that they just delivered another clue. They, they went one time too many. Well, I think also the people, f once they teased it for a SmackDown and it did a big number and they didn't deliver, I think fans figured out, okay, if this guy's coming back, it's going to be on pay-per-view. Right, and he did It's come not going to be some random SmackDown on a Friday night. And you could see in the ratings that, you know, that's what they figured yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, they didn't, they didn't really believe it after the first one because and, and he did come back on a pay-per-view, yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.